All right, so now we've seen a bunch of special cases. We've seen constant volume, constant pressure, constant temperature, and we saw that a special case of constant temperature was cyclic. Uh, I think there's only one more special case, which is when there's zero heat exchange. The last special case is when there's zero heat exchange. And there's a name for that. I don't know if you remember the name for that for class. Zero heat exchange. That's one you probably can't figure out. I'm sorry? OK, that would be adiabatic. Does that sound familiar at all? The way to pronounce that is adiabatic, with the emphasis on the bat, adiabatic. Uh, I don't know, I've been trying to explain where all these words came from, but I don't know where this came from, so we'll just memorize that adiabatic means zero heat exchange, by definition. Well, what's going to happen to our equation then in this case? Now, how would they signal in words when, where there's no heat exchange? Well, they have to do something to prevent heat from getting into or getting out of. They need to prevent heat from getting into or out of the gas. Well, how do you prevent heat from getting into or out of your home? Insulation. So if they say that it's thermally insulated, that's done to keep it adiabatic. Thermally insulated means they put in insulation to prevent heat exchange. So then Q should be zero. The, the whole purpose of insulation is to prevent heat from getting in or out. Notice that even though we use the word thermal here, this does not mean an isothermal process. It means an adiabatic process. So what was your answer? Is the work done on the gas? So what is really happening here? Is work being done on the gas or by the gas? Um, by the gas. So maybe that would be a good way to put, phrase the final answer. How much work is being done by this gas? Eight joules. Yeah, just eight joules. It doesn't really matter which of these equations you start with here, but part of describing the work is to say whether it's being done on or by. What's well, most simplest here to say, since the work done on is negative, Remember that if a mathematician says that the work done on the gas is negative 8, that's just a funny way of saying that work is not being done on the gas. That's a funny way of saying that work is really being done by the gas with a magnitude of 8 joules. How do we know that this was adiabatic? Because they said thermally insulated. So uh, in this case, did the temperature go up, go down, or stay the same? How do you know? Okay, that's a very good answer. That's not the answer most people would give. Most people would say, oh, zero heat, so zero temperature change. Uh, but it looks like we're avoiding that trap. Remember that heat is not the only way to change the temperature. Even if there's no change in heat, we can still change the temperature. Why is the temperature going down? Because the gas is doing eight joules of work. It's using up eight joules of its energy, and that's what's lowering the temperature. Also, people might think that there was no change in temperature because of the word thermally here. But remember that thermally insulated doesn't mean isothermal. It means adiabatic. So we have to watch out for that. What would the curve look like here? Well, an adiabat looks like an isotherm. 
it's again a downward sloping curve. So it would still be a curve like this. And are we moving here to the left or to the right? To the right. How do you know? That's right. That maybe that wasn't clear until we finished the problem. This might be a case where it may be a little hard to draw the curve until we're done, but it's still good to get into the habit of always trying to draw the PV curve for every problem, even if it's not integral to solving the problem, just for practice. Also, you'll probably get more credit on the exam if you're drawing PV curves uh, for the problems that you're working on. So here's the idea of that. Oh, so by the way, just like an isothermal curve is called an, iso an isotherm, a curve for an adiabatic process is called an adiabat. So this would be called an adiabat. By the way, yeah. Good. Now we're just going to memorize adiabats are steeper than isotherms. It's possible to explain why that is, but we won't take the time for that today. We'll just say that adiabats are steeper than isotherms. Adiabats are steeper than isotherms. So which of these curves is the adiabat and which is the isotherm? Two. Is that adiabat? And one is the isotherm. Okay, that can be important in some problems, although we won't be able to get into the details today. But adiabats are steeper than isotherms. You know, think of a good memory aid to help you remember that. I haven't thought of a memory aid for that. But anyway, adiabats are steeper. But they both kind of look the same besides that. 